Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. Um, <laughs> I just looked at my heart rate. It was like 140. So um, before we start, I've gotten some criticisms on me being too monotonous up here. So I'm going to try to use some inflection in my speech. Um, <laughs> hi, Brooks. Uh, for, any <laughs> for, for anyone who doesn't know us, I'm Jack. And I'm Aaron. Uh, it is such an honor to be the first senior speakers back in chapel with everyone here in three whole years. Uh, I know most of you see me up here like twice a week, but I'm very excited to finally be talking about something not related to God or Jesus. Today we would like to share with you guys our story as friends and journey through our most meaningful educational experience. Uh, because Arn and I are together so often, it has come to our attention that some people think we are involved in some sort of romantic relationship. Uh, as Arn just mentioned, this will be about our journey as friends, nothing more. Um, our story begins fall of 2015 at a place called Pike School in Andover, Massachusetts, uh, where we both began as new sixth graders. I was an awkward, chubby loser, and my parents desperately wanted me to make friends. I noticed I shared a few classes with another loser named Aaron, <laughs> so I decided to ask for his email address. Surprisingly, what really bonded us was our shared obsession with CW's The Flash. We both wasted countless recesses discussing the ins and outs of the show, and I was constantly annoyed by Jack's inability to keep his mouth shut about spoilers. For the rest of middle school, we were two peas in a pod, and I was super excited when I found out that we'd be spending another four years together at Brooks. <laughs> yeah, that's me on, on the left. Um, <laughs> when, I, when I found out that Aaron and I were going to school together again, uh, I felt relieved that I would already have a friend. We started high school by doing everything together, and we clung to each other for the first few weeks of the school year. We were with each other so often that some people actually started confusing our names, which visually doesn't quite add up. Uh, we both decided to play football freshman year. Unfortunately, during our first JV football game, I got a concussion within two minutes. And surprise, surprise, the same day day, so did I. <laughs> Except mine may have come from a marble countertop in the student center and not the game. <laughs> my injury put a little pause on my first semester. I was out from October to the beginning of December, taking me away from my new friends, and even when I did show up to class, I was not completely there, just kind of going through the emotions. Without Aaron by my side, I didn't know how I would go on. Even when he returned to school, he just wasn't the same. I had, done, I had done everything with him for the past three years and realized that Aaron's new slowness from his concussion <laughs> meant that I had to become my own person. That's why when Aaron quit football the following year, I stayed on the team and became the football superstar that you all know me as today. <laughs> we ended up in different classes with different interests, but still somehow remained close friends. Thankfully, when I came back, Jack had made friends that were happy to welcome me into their group. Thanks to these kids, the rest of freshman year went pretty well. But for the most part, I mean, for the most part, but there were still three years left. Uh, soph <laughs> sophomore year was very different from freshman year. It wasn't as exciting or new, and we already had established our relationships and friendships, but it, it just felt very awkward. People in our grade were trying to determine who they were and how they fit into the Brooks community. And Arn and I just kind of stayed together and went through the motions. Coming back from Thanksgiving break, things just did not feel the same. I didn't really want to go to school or honestly be around people at all. Not even Jack. So when I, I started going home early and was mostly quiet when I was around my friends. I was sad all the time and honestly had no clue why. The one thing that I did know was that I felt useless and out of place. Jack was one of the very few people who had noticed that I was not feeling the same, but it was not giving him the opportunity to talk or help me. I did not feel like anyone else would be able to understand what was going on through my head. Aaron had become a wet blanket. 
Our friends and I thought he was just having a little rough patch at first, and we laughed it off. But after a while, I began to take notice. This was not the same RN, not even concussion RN. I wanted to help him out, but because we are so connected, at almost the exact same time, I was struck with an intense bout of depression myself. Arn and I were both sad and depressed. <laughs> I still wanted my best, friend, my best friend to be happy, though, so I told my mom about Arn, and she ended up telling his. Once again, Jack just couldn't keep his mouth shut about the spoilers. <laughs> Uh, I started going to therapy that winter and got on some meds. Um, at first I was nervous talking to someone about myself and made my therapist contact name the nosy shrink on my phone. Um, but after a few weeks I did start to notice a change. However, just as Arn and I's year seemed to be turning around, we were sent home because of all the COVID stuff. I too started going to therapy and got some of my own happy pills. But unlike Jack, I was kind of excited to have someone who had to listen to me. Once the stay-at-home order was introduced, I, for one, was kind of psyched to be online for school. It was a great time to play some fort with the boys and slack off in class, but who knew that it would last for as long as it did. Being alone for so long just made me feel even worse than I had before. I started to think that Brooks was the problem and desperately attempted to leave, but my parents believed that staying would be best for me. To add insult to injury, in June of 2020, my grandfather caught COVID and unfortunately died from it. My grandfather and I were insanely close and I was not ready to lose him. Because of that, my mom had to leave for India to take care of my grandmother and during the days I was all alone because my dad was busy with work. Everything had just piled on too fast and I just felt defeated and alone. Without being at school, I did not have Jack with me to talk to and explain what was going on in my head. And I was too afraid that if I told my therapist how I really felt, they would send me to some sort of institution. Now that I think about it, it seems kind of stupid, but I was really picturing a building with the white rooms and the straight jackets. With all the time alone, with no one other than my thoughts, I decided to blame Brooks for all my problems. I thought that if I had gone anywhere else, I would have not felt alone and with the community. Honestly, at the time, I did not want to be alive, but I knew the rep precautions of my actions and decided to push through. I could not stop thinking about how my mom would react if I had killed myself and how difficult I would end up making life for her. At the time, life felt more like a mission and that I was just trying to complete for the others around me, trying my best to not allow anyone else to notice how I was feeling. Uh, like Aaron, I was planning on staying online our junior year, but surprisingly my family pushed me to come live on campus. I had a cozy single in Thorn the first semester and a connecting single with Will Page and Chase in the spring. Uh, I don't know if he's here, but happy birthday, by the way. It's my mom's birthday, too. Um, I missed Aaron, but being at Brooks during that year really helped me a lot. Boarding helped me realize the Brooks experience that all the senior speakers had talked about my freshman year. I felt like a part of a close community. My mom had just returned right before the beginning of junior year. So I decided to stay in online instead of boarding like Jack and the rest of my friends. During this time, I made some friends in my hometown of Reading. I was finally happy after a really long time. Life felt special and worth it again. Unfortunately, this just made me want to leave Brooks and go to Reading High even more. But my parents were persistent that Brooks would be for me after all. They had convinced me that there was only the tiniest bit of time left at this place and that I could spend all of my free time in Reading with my friends. Uh, I basically lost all contact with Aaron during the first semester of junior year. It felt like we were in two different worlds, and Aaron's world was not Brooks. Coming back to school that spring was very awkward. My friends had lived in the dorm together for the last six months. I had missed so much and did not feel pushed to make an effort. All I wanted to do was get good grades, graduate, and get out. Jack, on the other hand, did not seem to have gotten my anti-Brooks memo. He pushed me to hang out with him in our group from before COVID, and our connection picked up right where we left off. It kind of seemed like he missed me. He helped me catch up and pushed our friends out of the dorm to hang out with me. Well, that was at least whenever he was not napping. Jack loves his naps. He spends a good 75% of his life napping. <laughs> having my friends at home, I did not put too much stress on having a good time at Brooks, and with the help of Jack, I actually began to enjoy my time here. Kind of ironic. 
Finally, I understood that my problems were within and that Brooks had not done anything against me. Today, I'm so happy that I was never able to convince my parents to allow me to leave. Uh, basically, what Arn and I are trying to say is that you should never want or feel like you are alone. Uh, and at Brooks, you are not alone. It's important to have someone to talk to, and thankfully, Arn and I had each other throughout all of this. Another thing I want to emphasize is the importance of telling people about your problems. Uh, one of my biggest grievances with some of the senior speeches in the past has been the fact that people who are 17 and 18 years old come up here and act like they are the wisest people in the world and know every life lesson, and that everyone in the room should be grateful for the morals and lessons of their speech. Arn and I know that we aren't perfect. We know that we don't know everything yet. But we have had some major experiences with mental health issues, and even though we only briefly touched on those today, we want to make it known that sometimes it's okay to not be okay, but having people you can talk to is always good. When I was a sophomore, someone got up here and gave a, a speech about their mental health, about their mental health struggles, and how people who have depression shouldn't feel bad because there is a cure and they can be fixed with the right help. I found this speech kind of harmful because there's not always a magical fix to things like that. And sometimes, even though it's treatable, it can be something you have to live with. I'm in a good place right now. I'm happy and I have friends. Uh, but about a month ago, I told Aaron I wanted to kill myself and I meant it. For me, my depression has been something that ebbs and flows and not always something I have complete control of. Last year, I was talking with one of my friends here about it and he just didn't understand depression. He looked at me um, and said, wait, so you're telling me if you had $10 million and were surrounded by 20 hot babes, you would still have depression? That makes no sense. And the answer is yes, I could still be depressed. Maybe a tiny bit less, but still depressed. <laughs> uh, my point is, I don't really know when I might have a bad day or week or month. But one thing I absolutely know is that I will have Aaron to talk to. I love Aaron, and if I hadn't asked for his email address that one day in sixth grade science class, I may not even be here today. A few days ago, excuse me. <laughs> a few days ago, I saw the new Batman movie. I watched Robert Pattinson's new take on a dark, brooding, and moody Bruce Wayne. And as I'm sitting in the theater, I kept thinking to myself, maybe if Bruce Wayne had someone like Aaron, things would be different. I understand that most of you guys are half asleep, not paying attention to a single word we just said. Just for one second, I'd love it if everyone paid attention to me and kept in mind that it is important to check in on your friends no matter how normal they seem. A month ago, Jack seemed absolutely fine, at least in Jack terms. If we had not been so comfortable talking to each other, I would have had no clue what he was going through and would not have been able to help. I, for the longest time, was embarrassed about my anxiety and depression. Even right now, talking about it makes me feel a little uncomfortable, but I realize that it's important to talk to others so that it doesn't build up and burst out in a bad way. Even during our worst days, the two of us are still here walking through the halls, cracking jokes, and hanging out with our friends. I doubt many of you knew how I, felt, how I truly felt during my sophomore and junior years, and honestly, that is exactly how I wanted it at the time. I did not want to burden anyone with my own problems. So please let your friends know that you're there for them and you are happy to help. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to allow the two of us to show our roller coaster of a journey at Brooks. Even if you feel like a loser, like we were in sixth grade, you are a loser at Brooks School, <laughs> which means you are a part of a community that cares about you, even when you don't want them to, and you have people to talk to and support you. Whether it's your advisor, friends, teachers, wellness counselors, peer advisors, or me and Aaron, you are not alone. Uh, that's all we have to say right now. If we think of anything else, we'll let you know.